Hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for the 25th SF Indie Fest, uh, the festival which is taking place between February 2nd and 12th at the Roxy Theater in San Francisco, as well as digitally on your computer screen. So thank you all so much for joining us for the Q&A for our genre shorts program. Um, so excited to present this to uh, our audience and have all of our filmmakers here uh, to talk about their cool films. Um, so I'm Sarah Flores. I'm the shorts programmer here at IndieFest. And I'm gonna just kick it off by introducing our filmmakers. They're going to tell us who they are, what they directed, and tell us a little bit of how they came up with their stories. Um, so let's start it off with Donovan. Hi, Donovan. Hi. Um, thanks for having me. Really um, excited for this festival. Um, my name is Donovan, and my film is called Aiden. And um, it's it's a uh, kind of a, an acronym for AI and DNA if you just switch the letters around. And the idea is thinking about what happens when artificial intelligence um, gets to a point where it becomes dangerous and we need to figure out how to coexist with it. Um, the idea came to me um, kind of during the pandemic with a lot of downtime and time to think and uh, just thinking about my own personal um, existence and ideas of consciousness and what it means to be human um, in a world that's filled with diversity and complexity and so i created this character who i imagined initially as a robot to go and explore the world and help us understand or help me understand what what it truly means to be human and conscious and so um, over time the character evolved into um, something not robotic, but more of a enslaved human uh, through some type of experiment to allow AI to learn what it becomes human, thus with the goal of making it more safe to, you know, coexist with us. Um, one of the, I guess the biggest fear of AI is that it will become so smart that it will basically just kill us and just, there's no use for us. And that's actually a fear that a lot of scientists have. And so um, many scientists are thinking, well, why we, we need to make this thing conscious so it can truly understand us. And so um, the movie that I've made is just the beginning of this adventure. And uh, I just tried to um, illustrate how we <coughs> need French, friends um, and friendship to help us break out of prisons. And so as you saw in the film, he kind of breaks out and goes on a search for his his, his existence. Um, and yeah, that's the gist of the story. And I hope I didn't go on too long, but I really appreciate watch, you guys that watched it. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and you're great. You're awesome. And thank you for sharing um, kind of your thought process behind it. Um, Alex, hello, welcome. Hi. I'm Alex, one of the directors, one of the producers, and the sole writer of Dead Serious. The idea came to me in a dream, so I had a very wild dream about zombies, because I was into, like, zombie land, walking dead, and played many different zombie video games, so it stuck in my head for a while, and I was like, I'm tired of seeing boring zombies on the screen. Zombies that just bite and don't have any personality. What if we create zombies with a personality? So I created a short film, 10 pages, and I was like, these 10 pages could be a lot more than what it was. So then the 10 turned into 20, then the 20 turned into 30 and then 40 and I got one of my writer friends to to look at the script she edited a lot of dialogue because there was a lot more cussing and craziness and she was like we we'll try to shoot this on a lower budget so I digressed the script and pretty much made it into a proof of concept that we shot 
the other director, Drew Lynn, is insanely busy. So um, he couldn't be here today, but he's a great inspiration and a great mind on that series. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, it's such a fun, fresh take. So thank you so much for sharing with us uh, and for making this uh, awesome, awesome piece. No uh, thanks, Rodrigo. Uh, welcome so much. And thank you for joining us with Estelle. Estelle, thank you for joining us as well. Can you both introduce yourselves? And then Rodrigo, can you talk about the genesis of Street, of your movie? Thank you. Um, well, my name is Itzel. I'm her first CD, and we are actually here talking about another movie. That's why we are together right now. And I had the opportunity to work in Strings, which is which was like a really amazing experience. I fell in love with the script from the moment I read it. Um, thank you. My name is Rodrigo Moreno Fernandez. I'm the writer director of the movie. Um, we are well, yes, we were actually working on another movie right now, but I told her, you know what, let's join uh, <laughs> on this Q&A because these guys are awesome. So thank you for having us. Thank you for accepting our films. I hope you as an audience have enjoyed our blog or enjoy our, our, our shorts. We put a lot of love into them. Sometimes there's there's people that think, oh, it's 30 minutes, 14, 40 minutes, whatever, but it's a lot of work for us. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed our, our movies. Um, for us, the, the inspiration is uh, during COVID, I was trying to relearn guitar and uh, I realized that I'm not a 16 year old kid <laughs> when I used to learn how to play it. And, and nowadays it's as a grown man, it's, it's hard to get it. So it's kind of a, the desire to, 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 to know things or to have things, but impossible for us to make it. So in the story, as you saw, um, she finds a, a, a way to get, um, it, he makes a kind of a deal, a, a Faustonian deal with the devil and, or what the entity is all about. And that's, that's how we, we came up with that idea. Because, um, it's kind of like, I want my MTV, like right now, <laughs> like, like the song says, um, it was filmed in Brownsville, Texas, which we are also, we are actually right now in the Brownsville Public Library. Um, it's the southmost tip of Texas, five hours south of, of Austin. It was done lo locally here, uh, talent from diverse backgrounds. We, we thrive ourselves being very diverse with our cast and our crew. Um, the story, it's about a girl that is LGBTQ+. Plus. Um, our actors, Fish, which is a, a non-binary actor, is actually a model. Um, and then we have Hispanic people. We have people old age like me, <laughs> young people. Uh, so that's that's how we wanted to do. It's one of the priorities. And we, when we started this project, we wanted to include um, uh, people from all backgrounds, ethnicities, and everything. And I, we we were very proud of that. Thank you for having us. Um, yes, thank you so much for joining us. And I love just uh, talking about in front of and behind the camera, like having diverse perspectives and taking a seat at the table and telling stories uh, that has historically kind of been closed off uh, to a lot of folks within the industry. So thank you so much to you both. Um, and last but not least, we're joined by Giovanni, who's uh, joining us all the way from Italy. So. Uh, he's also here with Julia, who's going to help translate. Uh, welcome so much. Uh, please tell us about your film. Hi, uh, thank you to, to have me, for having me. And uh, I try to talk with my, I try to speak with my bad English and uh, <laughs> about my movie, Animalia. And thank you uh, for seeing me, uh, seeing you. And, um, this movie um, is uh, the inspiration from for this movie comes from uh, uh, another movie, uh, really, uh, uh, from Fra uh, Francois Truffaut uh, movie, uh, L'Enfant Sauvage, and talks about this uh, young boy who lives uh, uh, out of society in a forest, uh, um, and uh, this. Uh, 
this incipit uh, um, it's very interesting to me and uh, i think about it uh, a lot uh, uh, during my life uh, i see this movie uh, when i was uh, maybe 10 years and uh, this uh, this is incipit uh, i i try to uh, elaborate uh, um, the concept of the movie uh, with my own experience and generally um, I think that the conclusion uh, of Truffaut in uh, his movie is a very optimistic way of uh, see this story and uh, uh, I think uh, maybe I can do um, something a little bit different, a little bit uh, uh, um, pessimistic or in my case, uh, uh, realistic, uh, I think. And um, uh, the outcome of, uh, of the script uh, keeps, uh, keeps need, need a, a very long, a very long period of shooting. So uh, I found a way to uh, reduce it, reduce it in a sh middle short movie uh, that is now 30 minutes. And um, I was very, um, very happy with the, with the output. Uh, when I met uh, Francesca, the, um, the, the, ah, the, the actress, the protagonist, uh, the project comes alive because I have my protagonist, my, my girl. And um, so I build on her and uh, with a rehearsal, the, uh, different rehearsal with actors. I build uh, uh, the movie, and uh, also with my direct director of photography, Filippo Del Sanno, with um, with him, we rehearse a lot, um, a couple a couple of weeks uh, um, in um, in actual locations. Uh, I shoot this movie in, in my childhood childhood uh, places uh, near Verona. Uh, it's a city of north uh, north uh, Italy. Uh, um, do you know uh, Romeo and Juliet? Uh, it's the, it's uh, this city. Um, on in this this place, this is my childhood place. Uh, um, I I I come uh, with my big uh, crew because we are we were in a very uh, large number of people to work in the, in this particular project, and uh, it was very funny to uh, bring this uh, amount of people from milan is uh, a city uh, a big city <laughs> and uh, i i take uh, i take my crew uh, all around these uh, hills and uh, forests uh, and uh, it was very 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 fun and um, uh, i think uh, the the uh, the the outcome of the first my first movie uh, it's um it's uh, surprising for uh, the meaning of uh, what uh, this movie uh, meant to me, uh, mean to me, but uh, also for the meaning uh, that I found uh, during uh, realizing the, the story, uh, that it was uh, unexpected uh, before. I thank you very much for, see, for seeing this movie. I hope uh, my English was not uh, so bad. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> You're great, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Donovan, um, just to switch gears, I was wondering if you could talk about your visual approach within your film to kind of show the sense of uh, the not too distant future like how how did you approach the like sci-fi e-ness that kind of gives your film this lovely tone um well we i took inspiration from where i live in tacoma which is kind of a um it's kind of a post-industrial town really it's it was built on industry and you know extraction of resources in the region like trees and stuff so a lot of like industrial and like buildings um, from the you know turn of the century era so there's like and and there's also the modern 
um, app, you know, the modern growth of this, you know, of modern times. So there's like freeways and 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 byways that are kind of like on top of this old city. Um, so I kind of just the main reason I wanted to stay in our contemporary time was because I felt like this is a contemporary issue. And I also feel like technology creeps up on us in a way that by the time we realize it, it's already here. And oftentimes science fiction is looking way far away to this future. But I think that technology um, can be right now and we don't really know that it's happening. There's a lot of things going on right now with, with this technology of AI that we have no idea people are getting into and we're only seeing the top of it, the uh, top layer of it. So I wanted to keep it in a contemporary time, but I also wanted to use the structure of the city um, in an oppressive way because I wanted to kind of illustrate um, the kind of oppressiveness of his inner self. Like he was being kind of pushed into his inner dream world. And so I, maybe you couldn't tell, but he's living in two worlds. And so I wanted to create a sense of oppressiveness for him, as well as his kind of his at the other character, the female um, reporter. I wanted them to both be in, a, in an imprisoned kind of situation. So that's the the key or the the reasoning behind the look of the film. Um, awesome! Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, hey, Alex, your film, your project just seems like it was so much fun to shoot like really like so comedic and so just like it just seemed like it was a really like a hoot that's all that's the best way I can say it can you talk a little bit about what the production was like and what it was like working with your wonderful cast so it was very wacky and crazy I only have a wacky mind but adding the DP his name's Richard Messino He's the a chemist sis from Avengers Endgame Infinity War, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and a lot of stuff in the industry. And his mind coming in and thinking of shots and creativity is, is like we all like put our brains together to make this wackiest thing. A lot of the lines added in were improv so there's a lot of stuff that we shot that you don't see in the film in that we wrote in another version of the script but it's just amazing just to see what actors could bring to the table like for instance we have Paul played by Mark Wilder and He's a dancer, and I was like, so I want to use your dancing in a couple of scenes just to make it more goofy. And then I was like, it would be funny if you are more like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. So he grabs Kim and runs out of the scene after killing the main zombie named Adam. And... Adam's just a hoot on set too because Adam for weeks was trying to create the perfect voice and I was like, I, I like that voice, but could you add a little more comment to it and comment personality to it? I was like, you could watch stuff from Boondocks and all these other comedies just to add toward his voice and he pretty much killed it. So it was a ton of fun. We shot it for six days and we had no more than 12 hour days. It was just great. <laughs> oh, um, that, that does, seem, that seems like so much fun. That's one of the things that I miss the most, like, especially about uh, like li living in the Bay Area uh, is there's always so much fun like random film stuff to go and participate in and tell stories but also just like get to be silly and be with the people that you really like playing in the sandbox um, which sometimes you forget especially when you uh, 
make filmmaking a career, which can be really hard. So uh, thank you so much, because your project really reminds me of why it's fun to just go out there and create. Um, speaking of fun, Rodrigo, man, the music in your film, like it slaps, it's so good. Could you talk about how you use music as a story storytelling device? And like, how, how did you get everything cleared, man? Like, <laughs> Well, I mean, it was, you know, that it was, we had to put it on the budget. There's a guy named um, George Davis from Lionfish Music. Shout out to him. He's the one who helped us secure the rights for, for them. You know, it was a little bit scary at some point because we were finished post-production everything, but we didn't have the rights yet. So um, before I started submitting, he told me, no, don't worry, don't worry, we'll get him. And there's already talked to him. They already said that, yes, we just need to do paperwork. So we sent out to sub submissions and we got accepted to our first one. And then he told me, oh, it's going to take a little while. It's like, what? So at the beginning was a little bit hectic, but then we 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 got them on time and we had the, a great time showing them. I love that music. That's the music that I grew up with uh, when I was a kid. Uh, the UFO songs I used to play all the time when I was a, when I was a kid. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Peter Green and uh, Fleetwood Mac. Um, and then uh, the other ones are also one of one of the songs is actually from our composer. We had Sean McAllister wrote a, a piece, and that's the one where the homeless, uh, um, uh, the, the part of the homeless. That's a, an original from him, and uh, and the last song is from a, a, it's there's it's an Argentinian group, so I mean it's we tried to make it a, a little bit more uh, uh, eclectic there. Music, but it's a big part of it. I wanted to have a story about. I told the DP when we when we were starting. I wanted to um, I wanted greedy. I wanted dark, and I wanted punk. So that's what we wanted to have. Um, and the settings, you can you can see the settings that we have. We had a great time at the Kraken. That's the bar from our movie. Uh, shout out to Danny who let us use his uh, his, uh, his his bar. That's one of the scenes that we didn't spend a lot of money in decorating. Because the bar is like that. It's one of our favorite bars. Um, and then um, and then yeah, we wanted to incorporate that. Penny, which is a character play is played by Jamie Hunt. Jamie didn't know how to play guitar. So a month before we started shooting, I gave him the UFO songs and the other ones. And I told him, you gotta, you gotta learn them because I wanna see your fingers at least make an, an effort. So she learned the UFO songs, but what you guys don't know is that the close-ups of the actual rip, there it sells. She's the one who plays. <laughs> She's the one who knows how to play guitar better than anyone. So it was a blessing having an AD that knows how to live. <laughs> where are the odds, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 where it, it came from. Yeah. Well, you shred. So thank you for <laughs> hand modeling in there. Uh, it's really cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and Giovanni, your your film is crisp is how I would describe it. Like your cinematography is really, really gorgeous. Um, but what, what I was really struck by is um, how you use the camera to give the perspective. Um, per particularly, you know, your your final scenes are challenging yeah, uh, yes. to watch. Awesome. And I was really grateful at your choices uh, of the perspective that you show in like such dark moments. Um, can you kind of talk about like your approach to the filming that that final sequence? Yes. Um, the, first of all, um, uh, I talk a, a lot with my um, DOP, um, my director of photography, and, um, and we exchange uh, reference images uh, a lot and about the project, what we like, what uh, we don't like. And, um, I think uh, the approach that we, uh, from the start, from the beginning, uh, I, I want uh, uh, like a documentary approach of the camera with the few um, few edits on the main scenes, because uh, the the story per se is uh, a little bit uh, um, awkward or um, unrealistic in today moments uh, when when, uh, when uh, you find uh, someone that lives out of society 
uh, but near society, you, you can't find one. Um, in this in particular, it's an exaggeration, like a, a, a fairy tale. So uh, maybe a documentary approach, I think, uh, um, yeah, facilitate the, uh, yes, easily smooth, smooth the, um, the enter for a viewer uh emerge to emerge uh, himself in the story and uh, so uh, few cats few cats uh and um but but needed powerful uh so in the last scene uh, to return to your question question um the the violence the um, of the scene uh, uh, I didn't want. I didn't want to show the, the this type of violence. Uh, instead, I think uh, in uh, I think uh, about uh, um, uh, the, the the violence that is uh, it's it's part of the nature. It's part of the um, of the process. The process that uh, uh, the movie uh, show. So in the in the final. Uh, Sequence. Uh, we we see a lot of trees, and uh, I prefer to cut cut, cut uh, um, this tree, this panoramic view inside of the action. Um, in fact, for for communicate the, um, that uh, what what we see uh, it's it's nature. So when uh, uh, she's done with the hair thing, and uh, the movie is uh, at the hand uh we, we we come down uh, like in the beginning and uh, we, we only see her uh it's very uh always maybe static it's a very simple photography i think uh, but uh, not easy <laughs> it's simple but not easy. uh but uh, i think that uh, this is this, what the story needs uh, not uh, so much movement, uh, not so much uh, uh, particularly. Um, uh, do, do you know? In, in, in it's like um, sometimes you see things like that treated like a music video, you yes. know, like fast yes. cuts. Da, 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 and yours is just very like stark, and I think very yeah. elegant in the way that it approaches it. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I, I hope uh, that uh, the the output was uh, in filled in this way. Uh, uh, yes, this is this is why the why of the photography. Uh, and uh, I, I I have the fortune to 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 have a very good uh, director of photography. This is the the reality. Well, uh, it all comes down to translation, right? How you're able to work together. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank that's you all so the much. That's thank all the time that we have today. Thank you so much to our filmmakers for uh, creating these projects and letting us share them with our audience at IndieFest. Thank you for having us. Yep, yep. Thank you. Thank you.